Hey, this is Nicole Service with Remax and the Service Group. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about 10 things I wish I knew before moving to Snohomish. Now, a little bit of a background. I'm originally from California, so you're gonna hear me say the five freeway. That is the correct way to say it, but that's probably a topic for another video. Um, people up here don't say the freeway or the five freeway. They say I-5. They're wrong, and that's okay. Let them think they're right. But I originally moved up to Washington about 10 years ago. I've lived up here for about 10 years, and I moved up on Whidbey Island. I've been in Snohomish now for about five years, and there are a lot of things I wish I knew before I moved here. So that is why I'm making this video for you guys, so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did coming in here and not knowing how to pronounce Snohomish. So let's start with number one. The weather. I grew up in a place where it was sunny and 70 pretty much every day. So moving up to the Pacific Northwest was a real shock for me. There were seasons and there'll be people in other parts of the United States that say there are not seasons here, but there are definitely seasons. We've got a clear summer. In Snohomish, we get probably up to around mid 80s. We had really, really warm summer this year where we were you know, 90s. Sometimes we get over 100, but those are rare. Uh, you're more looking at 70s and 80s all summer with not a lot of rain. So all the grass dies, um, everything's brown, but it is so warm and nice and it's so welcomed after a wet and rainy spring. So springtime, super wet, super rainy, still kind of cold. Summer's great, winter's cold, it's cold. Fall is beautiful, all the leaves turn, turn orange and red and fall down and it's exactly like what you would think a beautiful fall would be. But uh, once you get that first windstorm in the fall, all the leaves disappear and the trees are naked and uh, you see your neighbors in the backyard you didn't know you had because there were trees there when you bought your house. So something to think about. Winter's cold. It's definitely going to snow at least once or twice a winter and it will stick maybe for a couple of days. There may be a school closure or two for snow days, but overall it's not too severe. The weather I think is pretty manageable as far as four seasons go. Um, I love it. We at least get one day to build a snowman um, and it is a good enjoyable season. All right, on to number two, the wildlife bugs. Uh, we don't really have anything poisonous here, which is really great news for me because I'm not a fan of poisonous things. Um, our spiders, we've got the big garden spiders with the big, big butts that make their webs across the way and as you walk through somewhere, you gotta have your arm flapping so that you don't walk into a spider web. That happens in the fall. Um, we have brown recluse really only have to worry about that if you're stacking wood and, and digging through a wood pile, wear gloves. Otherwise, there's nothing else really poisonous or dangerous here. We've got deer, um, raccoons, we've got uh, squirrels, which my dog will um, love to tell you all about the squirrels that are making an assault on our house. He tries to tell us all the time and we apparently don't listen. Number three, the city limits of Snohomish. They're actually really small. The, the area that we call the city of Snohomish is, is pretty tiny. It's really small. There's no like, big businesses. There's no really big commercial areas or big shopping centers aside from Fred Meyer, the Fred Meyer shopping complex. But the actual like limits of unincorporated Snohomish are huge. I could drive 30 minutes away and still be in Snohomish in a Snohomish uh, zip code. So when you're shopping around to move to Snohomish, you got to decide, do I want city? city life, I put that in quotations because Snohomish is a very small town, but within city limits, or do I want more rural out, um, you know, out one of the country roads in the other parts of Snohomish. So I had no idea that Snohomish was so big. Um, and Snohomish County is really huge too. It goes all the way up to the mountains and onto the other side of the mountains at some point. So um, make sure that if you're thinking of moving to Snohomish County, that you're aware of the differences between in town and out of town. Number four, um, I didn't know what the number 12 meant and there were people with signs with the 12 everywhere. I had no idea. Um, it's a Seahawks thing. That is the sports team here in Seattle. It's football. I'm not a big football fan. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big football fan, so don't hate me. Um, I'll watch it if I have to. It's okay. Uh, but not my thing. But in case you're wondering what 12 means, there's 11 players on the field and the 12th man is the fan. So uh, that's why people say that they are number 12 for Seahawks. Number five, coffee is a huge deal here. This is the birth of Starbucks here in Seattle. Uh, the first flagship store is there. I've been to it. It's really cool, line's super long. 
Coffee tastes the same as it does at any other Starbucks, which is okay, there's other better coffee shops. Um, but you can find a coffee stand literally on every corner across the street from another coffee stand, which is down the street from a Starbucks, which is down the street from another Starbucks. There are three Starbucks on Avenue D and up to uh, Fred Meyer, which is Big Fred. We've got this traffic circle and it goes up that way. There's a lot of coffee shops. So definitely start your coffee drinking habit now before you move up here so that way you fit in. Number six, there are a ton of tribal names here. So Snohomish is one of them. If you look at that name on paper, it is very confusing to say. I hear Snohomish, um, Snohomish. It's Snohomish, Snow-ho-mish. There are lots of other names like Tulalip, uh, Issaquah, Snoqualmie. You're definitely going to want to do some studying up before you start saying some of these names of towns and places before you move here because as soon as you say Skagit, people are going to know you're not from here. It's Skagit. Number seven, we are widely supported by a couple of major industries, um, tech industry. We've got Boeing, Microsoft, Amazon, um, Oracle, those are kind of the big main employers here. Everybody, every other person works for Boeing here. Um, huge, huge employer. They've got a main facility over in Muckleteal Everett area, but a lot of people commute, live on the other side of the five over here and commute over that way. There's also a Boeing facility down south, um, south of Seattle, and uh, Microsoft and Amazon down in Bellevue area. So you'll find a lot of people work for those areas. If that's um, an industry you're interested in, moving up this way is definitely the way to go. Number eight, Snohomish, the actual city of Snohomish is set up as a grid. I grew up in an area where this wasn't a thing, where streets were numbered, they all had different names. So Snohomish is lined up as all the avenue lettered streets are north to south. So we've got Avenue A, Avenue B, Avenue C, Avenue D. Avenue D is the main route north and south through town. And then we've got all the numbered streets. So 1st Street, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, 4th Street creates this grid. So if I say, um, hey, meet me over at 3rd and D, I know exactly where that is. 1st Street is our historic uh, shopping area, tons of antique stores. That's where everyone goes to walk around touristy area. And then 2nd um, Street is kind of our, our pass through. If you wanna drive through town fast, Going east to west, you're taking second. If you want to drive through a town fast, north to south, you're taking Avenue D. And on that note about First Street comes to my next point is First Street is terrible to park at. I want to support local businesses, but I can never find parking down there and it makes me never want to go. So you have to get your kind of your favorite spot to park and hit up a couple of those places. And don't be afraid to walk. It's okay if you don't park right on 1st Street. You're going to end up looping around 5, 10 times sometimes if it's busy to try to get a parking spot up front. You could have got there by now if you just parked on 3rd Street and walked a couple blocks to get to where you're going. It's a great place to, to take visitors and walk on 1st Street. There's lots of great dining, cute shops, cute antique places, ice cream, uh, coffee shops, of course, and uh, lots of activities, parades, farmer's market. It's a great, great area of town. I love being only blocks away from it, but the parking is terrible, so just be prepared for that. And our last and final point, number 10, Snohomish is flanked by two rivers. So there's a lot of areas where um, there's flooding uh, certain times of the year. Um, if you live on a property with acreage, a lot you know, there's going to be a lot of wetlands. So something to think about if you're buying an area, buying a house in an area that has a lot of land, you're probably gonna come across some wetlands. But in town where I live, there's we've got two rivers, the Snohomish River, which is the bigger one, and the Tilchuk River. Tilchuk River feeds into the Snohomish River. The city is kind of in the wedge, in the little pie wedge between those two rivers, and then it, they head out to the ocean, Pacific Ocean. So in the summer, my family, we love to go down to the Tilchuk River. It's a little bit slower, smaller, easier for kids to come play in. They find crawdads, they find fish, float the river. Moms sit on the side of the river in our 
in our chairs and have snacks and babies can play in the little little shallow area it's super super fun i love having the river so nearby and it's not something i grew up with i grew up near the ocean where that's where we went to go play in the water but here in snohomish ocean's probably about 30 minutes away to get to the beach over in Mukilteo. i want something closer than that and the river is perfect because it's really really safe for kids in the end of summer beginning of summer and in the winter the river the levels are too high the water's too fast not really a good option for younger kids so uh, I really hope that some of these things that I learned after moving to Snohomish help you before you come here. Um, I really have enjoyed talking to you guys about this. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. If there's any points that I miss that you think that should be added to this video, comment below. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys soon.